Welcome back to another Bible study of person, word study. Okay, We are in the book of Numbers. I want to go over uh, person again. The definition and the whole point of these studies is to prove that person is never a reference to just a soul by itself. It's never a reference to spirit by itself. It's never a reference to a, a body, flesh, by itself. Okay, It's a reference to all three. The whole point of this study is people keep trying to define person how they want to define it. Well, he's got a will, he's got an emotion, he's got feelings. Uh, that's not the true biblical definition of a person. Uh, a true de biblical definition of a person is somebody right here. An individual human being consisting of body and soul, we apply the word to a living beings only, possessed of a rational nature, the body, when dead, is not called a person. It is applied alike to a man, woman, or child. So as we see there, body and soul, and we apply this word to a living being. Spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. And when you got people trying to say God the Father is a person, they're trying to say, according to the biblical definition, they're trying to say that he has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. Now, I never believed that. I used to say God in three persons. But I never believed God the Father had body, soul, and spirit. But the Trinity is pagan, and it does believe that. And they fooled Bible-believing Christians into using pagan terms like God the Father being a person or the Holy Spirit being a person. So we started this study to see what the Bible defines person as. So, so far not one time so far has person been a reference to just the spirit or the soul. Um, person used 16 times in the book of Numbers. So we're going to go to Numbers 5.5. Five. There's a lot of times it's used here. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, when a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit to do a trespass against the Lord, and that person be guilty, then they, who's the they? person that be guilty. They shall confess their sins which they have done, and he, who's the he? Person. Shall recompense his, there it is again, I keep capitalizing it, I know I'm kind of breaking this up a little bit, because I'm trying to drive it home, brothers and sisters in Christ. His trespass with the principle thereof, and add to, unto it the fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he, he, hath trespassed. All this stuff, it's talking about the person. Who's the person? Okay. The man that's guilty. But if the man have no king's kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, let the trespass be recompensed unto the Lord, even to the priest, besides the ram of the atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. Okay. Person here is a reference to a man that sinned. A man has a body, soul, and spirit. And I also love how God is perfect. And I know you two too, brothers and sisters in Christ, how God is perfect. Look how it says here, but if a man have no kins kinsman to recompense the trespass unto. Oh, I, I, then that I can get away with you know sinning against God and sinning against my brethren. No, then the trespass be recompensed unto the Lord. Okay? There's no wiggle room for sin. There's no way to get away with sin. There's no way to justify sin. But in this context, person refers to the, to the they, the his, the he, the man, he that trespasses. Talking about a person, a, a man, body, soul, and spirit. Jump down to Numbers 19. 19 verse 17. Let's get to the next one. And for an unclean person... They shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin. Who's the person? They, the unclean. And running water shall be put thereto into vessels, and a clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in the water. Okay? And sprinkle it upon the tent and upon all the vessels and upon the person that, that were there, and upon him 
that touched a bone, or one slain, or one dead, or a grave. And the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day. And on the seventh day he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be clean at evening. It's talking about the men that went into battle. Okay. But the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, that show shall be cut off from among the congregation because he, man, himself, that's the, peop the person it's talked about here, people that went to war. Because he hath defiled the sanctuary of the Lord, the water of separation hath not been sprinkled upon him, he is unclean. And that shall be a perpetual state unto them, that he that sprinkleth the water of separation shall wash his clothes, and he that toucheth the water of separation shall be unclean until even. And whatsoever the unclean person toucheth shall be unclean, and the soul that toucheth it shall be unclean until even. Okay. Whose person's being talked about here? Men that went to war. Okay. Notice up here it says that person that were there, and upon him that touched a bone or a slain, they went to war, or one dead or a grave, buried somebody. Okay. It's talking about people, body, soul, and spirit. Once again, persons used one, two, three, three times throughout those passages, and you can't get away from it. It doesn't mean just body. It doesn't mean just soul. It doesn't mean just spirit. It has to have all three to be considered a person. Who's the person of the Godhead? Jesus Christ. Now, turn to Numbers 31.17. Okay, verse 1 through 16 talks about how they went to war because they were told to and they killed all the males but they kept the wives or the women and the children. Okay? And they were in error in what they did and this is where they're being corrected. Numbers 31, 17. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him keep alive for yourselves. And do, and do ye abide without the camp seven days. Whosoever hath killed any person, and whosoever hath touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. Would we read up there in uh, 1917? Okay, when they touch stuff like that, they're considered unclean. Whosoever hath killed any person. So who's the person referring to? Whosoever hath killed. Whosoever hath touched the slain. A man that has a body, soul, and spirit. So the person here is referring to somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. I know it's kind of hard for some people to really get that. And I'm not being mean. I'm just saying people are so, I want to defend the Trinity. I want to defend the Trinity. And it's like, why don't you defend the Word of God? Person is always a reference to somebody who has a body, soul, spirit. Man, woman, child. There's one mediator between man and God, the man, Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only person of the Godhead. As we're finding out as we're going through these studies. Numbers 31.25, let's jump down to 25. And remember the whole story of what's going on here. That I told you about. They took captives, and they took spoil. Numbers 31.25 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, thou and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the prey into two parts, between them that took the war upon them, who went out to battle. And between all the congregation. And levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of war which went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of the persons, and of beeves, and of the asses, and of the sheep. So what's the person referring to? The women that haven't laid with anybody? One soul of five hundred. 
Go to the uh, priest's office. Take it of their half and give it unto Eleazar the priest for a heave offering of the Lord. And the children of Israel hath thou hath, thou shalt take one portion of fifty of the persons of the bees, of the asses, and of the flocks of a manner of beast, and give them unto Le the Levites, which keep the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. So person in context, context here has to do with the spoil, has to do with the young women that haven't laid with any man. Okay? It's a reference to, to a man, woman, child. In this case, a woman that has a body, soul, and spirit. People are probably going to get tired of me saying that over and over, but hopefully it drives it home. We're going through all these situations where the word person is being used, and not once is a reference to somebody that has just a soul. And somebody that just, you know, just a spirit like a ghost um, or a soul. Because people say that they don't believe God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of his own, yet they'll call him a person. They say, oh, come on, that's ridiculous. We don't believe the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, and spirit of his own, yet they'll call the Holy Spirit a person. It's just insanity. All right? Numbers 31, 36. Am I jumping down too far? Let's see. Yeah, Numbers 31, 30, 31. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. And the booty, being the rest of the prey which the men of war had caught, was 600,000 and 70,000 and 5,000 sheep. And three score and 12,000 beeves and three score and one thousand asses, and thirty and two thousand persons in all of women that had not known man by lying with him. Okay? Right there it's clear. What is person? Thousand persons in all of women that had not known man by lying with them. Person here is a reference to women. Body, soul, and spirit. And look how many. And thirty and two thousand. That's after they separated the two up there that we talked about, how they gave, dished out their portions. Okay. Numbers 31, 36. Let's get out to more of the dishing out. And the half, which was the portion of them that went out to war, was in number 300,007 and 30,500 sheep. And the Lord's tribute of the sheep was 603 score and 15. And the bees were 30 and 6,000, of which the Lord's tribute was three score and twelve. And the asses were thirty thousand and five hundred, of which the Lord's tribute was three score and one. And the persons were sixteen thousand, of which the Lord's tribute was thirty and two persons. And Moses gave the tribute which the Lord heave offering unto Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. Whose person a reference to here? Once again, the women that have not known man they took when they wiped out a group of people that God commanded them to. Okay. What do women have? Body, soul, and spirit? Numbers 35, 9. I'm sorry, I keep jumping ahead too far. Sorry about that. Numbers 31, 42. And of the children of Israel, half which Moses divided from the men that warred, forty-three, now he, now the half that pertain unto the congregation was three hundred thousand and thirty thousand and seven thousand and five hundred sheep, and thirty and six thousand beeves, and thirty thousand asses of five hundred and sixteen thousand persons. Going back up to what it was talking about. Who's the person referring to here? The women that have not lain have not known man. Right. Numbers 35, jump down to the next part. Uh, Numbers chapter 35, verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither that the slayer, remember that, may flee thither. 
It's talking about somebody who accidentally kills somebody and it's an accident. It's a, per, it's a man or a woman. They're cities they're supposed to be setting up for refuge. Which killeth any person at unawares. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment which killeth any person when he kills a man, woman, or child and it's an accident the manslayer is supposed to have a refuge until he can hide from somebody it's like saying somebody killed my son and I'm going to seek vengeance on him and he runs to these refuge cities I can't do nothing he's safe there until he is judged mm -hmm. the person is referring to some Buddy that gets killed that has a body, soul, and spirit. See, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. Verse 13. And of these cities which ye shall give six cities shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on this side of Jordan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge both for the children of Israel and for the strangers and for the sojourner among them that everyone that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, him, who's the him, the person they're talking about there? It can be an accident, but this is saying it's deliberate. Verse 16, And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. So in context, the person here is referring to somebody who's been killed. Or person is referred to somebody who's been killed. Right? Accidentally. Numbers 3530. Okay, let's look at the last part we just read, verse 16, where it says, And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. You go down to, jump down to verse 30 in chapter 35. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, plural. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Killeth any person. Who's that person talking about? A person, a man, woman, or woman that's being killed, or even child that's being killed. And... Uh, but one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. What's person in context there? The person that did the killing. You've got to have two or more witnesses. There is no one person saying, oh, he killed him. I'm telling you, he killed him. And then everybody just stones him. It doesn't work that way. Person, so far in our studies, and I know we're kind of new, kind of at the beginning in these studies, is a reference to a man, woman, or child that has a body, soul, and spirit. Be not deceived, brothers and sisters in Christ. Words have meaning. It's not about our feelings and opinions when it comes to definition of words. It's about context. Okay? A person, as we read, an individual human being consisting of body and soul. Now, I don't like the word human. human. Uh, the Bible word is man, and man is used for mankind. But being So an individual man being consist of body and soul, we apply the word to living beings only, possessed of rational nature. The body when dead is not called a person. Man is in mankind is referred to man, women, and children. Okay, or a child. So, I like going through this with you, brothers and sisters of Christ. I pray you're staying strong, that you're standing firm. This whole study is about standing firm to the Godhead and continue rejecting the Trinity, the pagan Trinity. And you'll have people attack you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, one of the big attacks against us that came up recently is someone saying that because the Catholic Church teaches it, that's why we say it's pagan and it's wrong. Uh, no, we say it's pagan and it's wrong because it's not found in Scripture. Trinity is not in the Bible. God in three persons is not in the Bible. We're, we're proving it. The only person of the Godhead is Jesus Christ. God the Father is not a person. The Holy Spirit's not a person. So how can you sit there and say God in three persons? That's satanic. It goes against the Bible. That's a totally different God's plural. It's not the capital G God of the Bible. 
Okay. So they'll attack you and say that's what, and I'm like, no. We do Bible studies on the word person. We do Bible studies on one God. We do Bible studies on Godhead, and we realize that the Trinity is not in the Bible. It's not there. So then we stop after doing our studies, brothers and sisters in Christ, and we go, well, if the Trinity's not in the Bible, I was raised as a false Christian on the Trinity. Um, if the Trinity's not in the Bible, where did it come from? Then you do that study, and you find out it goes back to the Catholic Church. And you've got people that claim to be attacking the Catholic Church, trying to get people to come out of the Catholic Church, that are preaching the Trinity to send them back in to the Catholic Church. Okay? And it's like, it's just frustrating, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I know it is for you, too, when you have someone say, uh, you know the Trinity, the Godhead, in other words, they just add it to Scripture, and it should irritate you. It irritates me. Or they'll say the, God, the Godhead, also known as the Trinity. Uh, no, it isn't. Trinity's not in the Bible. They'll try to do something, and there's brothers that I, I love in Christ Jesus, and they'll do the same thing when it comes to the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, what is it? The, the Great Tribulation, also known as the time of Jacob's trouble, although say the time of Jacob's trouble, also known as the Great Tribulation, and it's like you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, falsely called the Great Tribulation. The Godhead of the Bible, falsely called the Trinity. Godhead and the Trinity are two different things. Don't fall for it. I'm talking about the Godhead of the Bible. They like to talk about the Trinity, the pagan Trinity of the Catholic Church. Okay. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. We finished Numbers. We'll get into the next book. I've got some other uh, studies I'd like to do to share with you and get your insight on and to also to encourage you. The encouragement for these word studies is to teach you to look at the context of the words and look up the definition of words. When I do my daily devotions with my wife, um, we come across words that we're like, we kind of have an idea what it means, but we, we turn around and we go ahead and we look them up again in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And we're shocked. I'm like, I knew it kind of what it meant, but there was more to that word than I realized. Okay? Words have meaning, and I'm encouraging brothers and sisters of Christ to stand for the Word of God. Study, study, study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a working that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'll see you in the next video.